So it's been a year since I started using an iPhone as my main everyday smartphone. Uh, I mean, listen, I gotta tell you, if I could go back in time and talk to the Travis of 2019 and say, hey, do you think you'll be on an Android phone sometime in 2020? That Travis would say yes. Then I would tell him about how trash 2020 was and how you can't even really leave your house anymore. And 2019 Travis would say, what, what you talking about Willis? But regardless, I will say this for sure. I really thought this was gonna be a temporary stop along my ride back to Android. And I actually had my eye on a couple of phones that I thought would transition me back to the Android side of the fence. But as you can tell, I'm still using iPhones as my primary phone. That doesn't mean I haven't tried a lot of Android phones this year. I actually have reviewed a ton of them. Uh, maybe I'll leave a link to a couple of them here in the description below. But the question is, what is the phone in 2021 that might bring me back to Android from my year-long love affair with iPhones? <sighs> I wonder if you can guess. But I'll tell you all about it right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you to, to Travis. <laughs> what up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below, but for now, let's just get into the video. So as I said, I've been an iPhone user for about a year now, and I've kind of gotten accustomed to it. Being able to use all the stuff from my iPhone to my iPad has been pretty cool. I mean, AirDrop and a bunch of other integrations that iOS has has been really, really great. And transitioning from the iPhone 11 Pro Max to the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it was the easiest transition to be able to move my content over ever. Like it beats any experience I've had on any Android phone. Now I'm sure it's gotten better, but there's been nothing that has worked that well. I'll talk more about that in another video. But yes, I really expected this to be about a six month thing because I went from the Galaxy Note 10 Plus not using using it for a little while and then you know getting rid of it to iphone for a while to bridge the gap until 2020 came along and some other phone would take me back whether it been the s20 series of phones which i knew that wasn't going to be it the note series of phones which i'll talk about my history there or you know the one phone that i was pretty positive was going to bring me back now i want to talk about my previous use of smartphones so up until this point i was a galaxy note user since the galaxy note 2 as a matter of fact, this is the first year since the Galaxy Note 1 that I have not bought a Galaxy Note uh, phone. It's, it's crazy. The Note 20 Ultra was a pretty good phone, but I mean, it was a little too spendy for me and I, it, just, uh, it just didn't grab me. That's not to say it wasn't a good phone or that it isn't excellent or all those things, it wasn't. Um, I just was really happy with my iPhone 11 Pro Max and it wasn't enough to pull me away. I really thought the Fold 2 would. And I bought that, I reviewed it here. You can watch the videos, I'll leave a link somewhere. And that didn't do it either. I don't even have that phone anymore. That, I, I don't even have it anymore. So if it's not gonna be the Galaxy Note series of phones, which I mean, by the way, it could be. Like the next series of the Galaxy Note phone might be the one that brings me back. And I would love that. As a person who's used Galaxy Notes for so long, I would like to go back to it, I really would. I just wanna feel the pull a little stronger than in 2020. But I don't know if it's gonna be that phone. It actually was a different phone that I was looking at to bring me out in 2020 and it failed too. Like it, it almost had me, but could have maybe had me, but the company that made it, I feel like they messed up a little bit, but they could do it in 2021. Remember when you went to school and you saw the exchange student, you know, exchange students, you didn't really pay attention to them, but you saw that one really cute exchange student. You were like, who that is? Well, for me, that was the OnePlus 7 Pro <laughs> back in 2019. This thing came out of nowhere. And I was like, who that is? And I fell in love with this phone. This became my favorite Android phone, well, for quite a while. As a matter of fact, it kind of ruined the Note 10 Plus for me. Even though they're not the same type of phone, the things that made me fall in love with this phone and still have it really says a lot about OnePlus, the hardware, the software, and everything that I love about this. There are phones I have bought since I got this that I don't even have anymore, but I still have the OnePlus 7 Pro. Why? Well, it's the same reason that I actually expected the OnePlus 8 Pro to pull me over in 2020. But for some reason, OnePlus lost their way. But let's talk about why I like the OnePlus 7 Pro and why I thought the OnePlus 8 Pro was going to pull me back and why it didn't and why I hope in 2021 it will. First of all, the OnePlus 7 Pro was beautiful. It was one of the first mainstream phones you could easily get here in America with a 90 hertz uh, refresh rate. 
It was incredibly snappy fast. The cameras, while they did catch a little flack, actually worked out okay, especially when the updates came out. It was a fine serviceable camera, but that front facing uninterrupted display, mwah, man, it had me. Between the 90 Hertz, the uninterrupted display and the incredible snappy nature of that operating system, Oxygen OS, I was in love. Like this phone was everything to me. It was blue, y'all know how I love blue. And the only thing that was really missing was wireless charging. And I even told you how I fixed that. Like that wasn't even a problem. It was really my dream phone. And if it wasn't for some other phones that came after it, I would have just kept it all the way through. I did keep it and used it after the Note, but then I came to the iOS. And the thing about OnePlus that I really like is they were trying to innovate with the pop-up camera, the 90 Hertz display being the first one to do that sort of thing at least here in America, I was super excited about. Like that was something that was amazing. And it was only $750. Like it hit every single bell on. The price was right. The performance was great. The display was amazing. Like everything about it was great. Could have used a little bit of help on the camera side, but again, you put a Gcam APK on it, it was, it was legit, a legit phone. So it's no surprise that I really expected the OnePlus 8 Pro to bring me right back. And then OnePlus kind of messed up. The OnePlus 8 Pro, while looking beautiful with some of their new colors, introduced the hole punch, which was one of the things I didn't like about the other phones. And they raised the price. OnePlus. What happened to you? It almost seemed like some of the innovation went away. Now, of course, they did come with a much faster wireless charging, which is great. 120 hertz display, which is great. Like, at full resolution, even Samsung couldn't do that for their flagships this year. I mean, listen, that was all great. And I was super excited about it. But when I saw that price, I could never bring myself to pull the trigger on it. It was just too much. And another thing OnePlus does that I'm just not a fan of is the T version of phones. You know, when you buy your OnePlus 8, 9, 7, whatever, that there's gonna be a T version later that year. Like you're already supposedly upgrading your phone less than a year later. It's kind of an insult. It makes no sense to me. I still can't figure out why they don't just do one flagship of that series a year. The 8 and 8 Pro makes sense, or the 8 and 8T makes sense. Like, if you separate them in that way, that makes sense. But to have a T and a Pro that are almost the same, but one's a little better, but one isn't, I don't like it. And to make things worse, the 8T actually was less priced than the 8 Pro, and the only thing that was really missing is wireless charging. So it almost makes you go, if you don't like the Pro version of the phone, you just wait a couple months for the T. How is that good for business? It can't be a good thing. Doesn't seem like it's, it doesn't seem smart to me. Just make a really good phone and be done with it. But the one thing OnePlus did right this year is they put different phones at different price points. The Nord came out. They have a couple other phones coming out. Like the price ranges they have covered now are pretty good. And even the OnePlus 8 Pro is now dropped down a price, at least on Amazon right now, it's on sale. It's not a terrible price, like $800. But even then, I, at this point, like we're only a couple months away from the nine, which I'm hoping will bring me back. But based on some of the leaks, I don't think it will. So far, it still looks like they're keeping the punch hole. And let me tell you something, an uninterrupted display is one of the reasons that I went to the OnePlus 7 Pro in the first place. I love the little pop-up camera, but more so, I'm more about the uninterrupted display. I don't care how you get there. Maybe you give me a little bit more, uh, maybe you put the, the cameras in the top. I don't know, I don't care. Just give me an uninterrupted display. It makes a big difference to me. I don't want a punch hole. I don't want that. And I'm also concerned that OnePlus may price this high again. And I just have a problem paying $1,000 for a OnePlus phone. Not because it's not necessarily worth it, but I just, just, it just doesn't feel right. OnePlus, give me an uninterrupted display. Keep pushing the technology boundaries. You've done it with fast charging. You've done it with the, the refresh rate before anyone else was really doing it over here in the States. You've done it with so many things, the pop-up camera, all the cool things. And now you're kind of regressing and then charging people more, it's almost like you're becoming Samsung and I don't want that. For me, all the things that made me fall in love with OnePlus and the phone that they came out with, the OnePlus 7 Pro, I just need more of that this time in the nine and hopefully in 2021. Now I know it's probably too late, it may not happen unless this Ultra that they're talking about comes out and maybe that's it, I don't know. But OnePlus, if you're listening to this, please, please, please bring back a 7 Pro, but better, like please, please. It's the phone that I know for sure will bring me back to Android over iOS. Until that point, I, I, I don't think, I mean, I'm, I'm doing well over here. The iPhone's treating me pretty good. And really for all the things that I really need done, the cord 80 to 90% of the things I do online, the iPhone does just fine. I don't need anything else. The apps work the same. 
I have better integration with it, so I don't really need to go back to Android. But OnePlus, you can do this. But what do you think? Do you think OnePlus can bring out a phone that makes you want to go to it rather than any of the other guys like Samsung or LG or anyone else? Tell me in the comments below and we'll talk about it. But I got to tell you, the OnePlus 7 Pro, baby, I actually did a video about it earlier this year. I'll leave a link to it over here and some other stuff. Hope to see you again real soon. Peace and love.